Lord, we just thank you this morning, thank Father. You, it is it is your Lord, grace and your mercy Jesus. that we are saved. It is because of the grace of God I'm healed, I'm delivered, you, and I am set free. It is your grace that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I thank you today, Father, that healing has been established. We're not coming as beggars to beg you to do something. No, we come as thankers. Hallelujah. We're thanking you for what you've already done. You, and we're getting ourselves in line with the Word of God that by you, those stripes Thank we you, are healed this morning. Glory to God. So now we believe that in our heart Thank and you, we're going to confess it with our mouth that I'm healed this morning. Amen. I thank you, Lord, that Brother Keith Copeland is healed this morning. Keith Rasnick is healed this morning. That's our confession. Sister Darlene is healed. Sister Sabrina. Brother LJ. Sister Linda is healed this morning. Brother Kevin is healed this morning. You say, yeah, but I, I, but I still feel. And I'm not going by what we feel. I'm holding fast to the confession of faith that we are healed today. We are set free and we are delivered. And I expect this body to get in line with what has already took place in the spirit realm. Hallelujah. I thank you today that I can look in the mirror and say, body, you get in line with the word of God. You body, you straighten up in Jesus' name. We have power and authority. Hallelujah. We stand on the scripture that the spirit of God. Thank Hallelujah. We're quick in this mortal body. So I command bodies to be quick in this morning by that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Hallelujah. Quicken us. Our bodies will be quickened right now in Jesus name. God, I thank you that things will sport healings will speed up. Yeah. Miraculous will take place. And I thank you for it. God in Jesus name. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Come on, let's move into worship this morning. Thank you, Jesus. For he is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead. Lord, come on, sing it with us. For He is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead. I have been reading 
precious indeed. My Savior to me, I'm redeemed. Yes, I'm redeemed. Happy and glory, someday shall be. I have been redeemed. I'm redeemed. My love divine, glory, glory, Christ is mine. All to Him, I now resign. Say, I've been redeemed. Thank you, Lord, and I'm going to fly away. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Somewhat more when the time is over. I fly away. Place, my God. Oh, 
you're awesome in this place, mighty God. You're awesome in this place, my Father. You're worthy of all praise, for you are like your place. You're awesome in this place, mighty God. the word for grace but amazing no other word for god but awesome hallelujah thank you i tell you what something happens when we speak the name of jesus that at the name of jesus every knee shall bow whether it be in heaven earth or under the earth every knee shall bow at the name of jesus hallelujah Let's do it one more time. Can we do it? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Over every heart and every mind. Come on, thank you, Lord. I know there is peace within your presence. I 
needs to say something this morning. You're not taking my family. You're not taking my kids. Yes, You're not yes, taking my life. You're not taking my health. Hallelujah. We need to be Bold shouting the place. name of Jesus. Come on over depression, over mountains, in the streets. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on and just bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Your name is healing, your name. 
transition to, a, to the Word of God. Amen. I think our pastor is going to, he has a song he's going to do. Thank you, Jesus. And we're going to get into Thank the Word of God. Uh, remember our Amen. home folks. Like I said, Thank we had prayer Lord. requests at the beginning of service. Uh, I wanted to add, let's continue to remember Sister Wanda that had uh, surgery on her mouth. I know she's still recovering, so we're going to, we're just continuing to believe God. Amen. She's coming up, coming out. Yes. So we miss them when they ain't here. So just remember our congregation when you're uh, praying throughout the week this week. I pray that you... Uh, Thank you, Jesus. I, I, no, no condemnation of the, if, you, if you don't do this. But I pray that we all pray throughout the whole week. It's not a Sunday and a Wednesday thing. Yeah. But every single day, amen, yeah. talk to the Lord. I'm not saying you got to seclude yourself in the box. Bless the Lord. I'm Bless saying the Lord. as you walk, just like I have a relationship with my wife. Mm -hmm. We're in the house. We might not be in the same room. Amen. I come around there and I talk to her. I holler, whatever the case, I, I'm constantly communicating throughout the day. Amen. God is with, He's on the inside of us. Thank amen. You. Jesus. Throughout your day, acknowledge Him and He'll direct your path. Acknowledge Him. Talk to Him. Amen. Let Him know how much you love Him. So just pray. When you're doing that, pray for the congregation here yes, at amen. the church. Amen. amen. So uh, come on, give, a, give our pastor a hand Thank this you, morning. Amen. He's coming in transition. Come on, give, give the Lord you. and our pastor a hand. Thank you, Lord. I mean, it's glad to be here today. Amen. amen. We realize a lot of them's out, but you're here. That's right. Are you here today? Oh, yeah. here. Did you come to hear a word from the Lord today? Yes, yes, yes. Did you come today to give a worship and praise to the Lord? Amen. Come on, somebody. Yes. Hallelujah. We'd love to preach to those that are not here, and we do sort of on Facebook, I guess. But we come to worship God today, yes. and we come to hear a word from the Lord today. Um, I want to... Uh, do a song the Lord's laid on my heart years ago when I was a, when I was a child coming up my dad pastored a church Congregational Holiness Church up in Georgia it's called Oars Crossing Church and uh, there was a, a couple there brother and sister Ray was their last name brother Ray was a good preacher and sister Ray she was an excellent singer some of us here today uh, we always like bluegrass music Music, good southern gospel bluegrass music and 
Sister Ray always, when she sang, she had as true a bluegrass voice as you'd ever want to hear. I remember that. Isn't it something how that when you get older, you remember some of the good things? Amen. When you were younger and you were little. I'm, I appreciate that. Sister Ray done this song right here, and I was just thinking about it this week. Uh, so I want to try to do it for you. And it's going to go along with what the Lord has laid on my heart to preach to you this morning. Amen. This old song says this, I'm using my Bible for a road map. And I'd like to say that we've never done this together. <laughs> never done it before, but the, I want you to listen to the words to it, because the Bible is our road map to heaven. Amen? Amen. So I want you to listen to this song. I hope it'll be a blessing to you. I believe we do it in the F. I'm using my Bible for a road map. The Ten Commandments tell me what to do. The Twelve Disciples are my road sign. And Jesus will take us safely through. There'll be no detours in heaven. No rough roads along the way. I'm using my Bible for a roadmap. My last stop is heaven some sweet day. I'm using my Bible for a roadmap. The children of Israel used it too. They crossed the Red Sea of Destruction. For God was there to see them through. There'll be no detours in heaven. No rough roads along the way. I'm using my Bible for a road back. My last stop is heaven some sweet day. Come on, help us sing it. I'm using my Bible for a road map. The children of Israel used it too. They crossed the Red Sea of destruction. For God was there, there to see them through. Oh, there'll be no detours in heaven. No roads along the way I'm using my Bible for a road map my last stop is heaven some sweet day Amen Hallelujah Oh praise the Lord isn't that a good song Hallelujah come on give the Lord a hand clap Hallelujah come on make a noise today Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, praise His holy name. Thank you, Jesus. All right, so I get to preach to the left side today. Amen. So if you want to move to the left side, it'll be all right, because I can stay over here. Usually I'll have some over here on this side, and I'll say, uh, I need to move over here because y'all looking at me funny. Then I'll move the left side and they'll start looking at me funny. So I'm just going to have to stay with you today. Amen. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Praise the Lord. It's so good to see everybody here. Appreciate our visitors. And uh, we had some that had to leave just a few minutes ago. And we're going to take a minute of prayer. Because these folks that were here earlier were having some problems and some issues. And we want to pray that God would bless them. They needed some help, and we were going to help them at the end of the service, but they weren't able to remain, and they had to leave. But I want, how many know that prayer is better than $100? Amen. Did, come on, just, just if you don't talk to me, just nod your head. Let us do it like this. Prayer is better than $1,000. Prayer changes things. Do you believe that with me today? So I want us to stand before we do go any further. 
and I want us to send uh, the power of prayer to these folks that was here this morning. They had to travel on uh, to where they were going. But I believe that God can provide. Do you? Can God provide? Janice said that this morning. So let's pray for them. Pray together out loud, would you please? Lord, we come to you right now about these folks here. Lord, that were here this morning, and we know that they heard some of your word. Your word, of, your word changes things. Your word will give us answers. And God, we just pray for your protection on their behalf. God, we pray for help and strength in their lives. God, we ask for provisions. God, for these folks that were here earlier today. God, touch them in a mighty way. Whether they need healing, whether they they need a, a uh, uh, stress healing, mental healing, whatever it is. God, we're believing that you're our Lord, you're our Savior, and we just thank you for it. Give you honor and glory and praise. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. How many believe what you prayed is coming to pass? Let's take a minute and give the Lord praise and just tell Him thank you for answering our prayer. You believe God answers your prayer? I do. Thank God. Thank God. I believe that He answers, always answers our prayers. Amen. We're just kind of taking a minute or two for Brother John, I guess, to get back to our... Uh, uh, is he back there? Did he dip down? He's coming. Okay. We want to take just a minute. Anybody got a word of testimony? Because we want you to see the word for yourself. And we like that and appreciate that. Are you doing the scripture today? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> when we're shorthanded, Brother Keith's not able to be here. And we sure do miss people that's not able to be here. Most of our choir's not here this morning. Don't we? We, we miss them, don't we? Amen. But praise God, we can go right on and be a blessing to the Lord. Amen. So we want to do that. Anybody got a testimony? God been good to you and you'd like to just say so. Go ahead, Sister Terry. Wednesday night, um, I asked her to pray for my freezer. And she said she didn't have any freezer. It's really fun. I got to work. I got to work um, Thursday morning. My freezer's actually working better than it did. All right. It went out. And so the man they proceeded the next day. He brought me this like stand up refrigerator type freezer so I could like get from day to day. Mm -hmm. I said, Gary, I'm not going to need that. He's like, well, I said, we prayed over that freezer and it's working. <laughs> he walks in the freezer and he's big as They didn't do nothing this way. I said, I'll tell you, the man did not do anything to this freezer. I was sitting there busting out laughing. I was able to quote to him scriptures and stuff. We come to an agreement. We mm -hmm. agree. Come on. And I said, do you not believe God can't touch an air conditioner? Oh, praise God. 20 minute sermon, but then he just kept wiping his head. <laughs> Yeah. So he calls her and he's like, well, the freezer seems to be working. Do I still need to leave the freezer? And she's like, well, I said, Mr. Derek, tell us that the Lord healed me. <laughs> and he's he like, under his breath, Miss Teresa is sitting here telling me to tell you that she's right. <laughs> Wow. And here it's spread free on when he when he comes mm -hmm. apart and it's like three or four weeks before it comes from uh, Wisconsin. 
Mm -hmm. Well, my freezer's still working, so I'll get it. Well, glory. But it was Hallelujah. testimony to uh, not only the owner, you're looking at the manager, it's with the other managers, and mm -hmm. now it's went all the way to uh, the office to the owner. <laughs> yeah, praise God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. 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 Do y'all really believe what she said? Come on, somebody. Do you believe what she said? I was I, I was real skeptical when my when I first got saved, and I didn't believe that you could speak to inanimate objects. I just thought you could speak to people, and you know I was real carnal. And uh, I come to realize Jesus spoke to inanimate objects. He spoke to a fig tree one time. They couldn't talk back to him, and that you know what happened with the fig tree. The children of Israel, God blessed them to a point to where they for forty years wore the same clothes. Never wore out. Come on, he's interested in us. Aren't you glad for that today? Praise the Lord. I'm so glad for the blessings of God. He's concerned about us today. Can you say amen? amen. He loves us today. Whatever you're facing and whatever you're dealing with this morning, God is interested. And we're not trying to get God to do something. All we're trying to do is involve Him in what we do and what we need. Are you listening to me? Just receive what He's done. Praise the Lord. All right. I want to share some things with you. I'm, I, I, and understand this. We're coming up to an election here. And I'm not trying to get political. I'm trying to stay biblical. Amen. Are you listening to me? If I were to say some things that disagrees with your uh, politics, I'm not saying this to disagree with politics in any capacity. I'm saying this to preach the Word of God. Let me say this to us about our voting and our elections. When we go to vote, here's what I'm going to do. You do what you want to. I'm going to do this. I'm going to vote the Bible. I'm going to pick the candidate that is closest to this book as I can. Now, understand this. We're not voting on a pastor. That ain't the same thing, right? But whoever is closest to this Bible and this book, I'm voting for. I believe in voting. I believe an American should vote. And don't get mad at me. I'm not. If you don't, that's up to you. I'm talking about myself. I'm going to vote for the candidate that is most to this Bible. I will vote against the candidate that is further from this Bible, such as abortion. I won't vote for anybody that would, would have a baby killed from the time of conception until right on. Not getting political, I'm preaching the Bible this morning. Are you listening to me? Now understand this. Everybody don't agree with the Bible. But we need to agree with this Bible, even if I don't believe a certain way. Brother Doll, I need to go with this book. We believe here, and you know this, that when we preach, we're going to preach that word. But we're living in a world, how many would agree with me today that we're living in a world that will call black white and white black? Amen. We're living in a world that is trying to convince people that it's one way when it's really another. That's called demonic deception. We're living in a world today that is on, on nationwide TV. If you watch the news, y'all watch the news? Anybody watch the news? I do. I watch the news. Now, I don't stand there and watch it all day long, 24-7, but I watch it enough to keep up with what's going on because we need to know that. We need to know what's going on. And how many knows that you can't... <laughs> I, I, I told the Lord, I don't, really, I don't think I want to say it this way, but my wife's daddy, Sister Janice's daddy... <laughs> He said it like this. He said, you're not going to throw manure in my face and call it ice cream and expect me to believe it. Come on, that's, that's a little brass, but that's the truth. And that's what people are trying to do is throw things in our face to make us think that it's one way when it's really not. Little Jerry preached a message a while back, and boy, I appreciate that message. He said, I'm tired of people lying to me. 
Come on, somebody. Are you tired of people lying to you? Amen. Well, I want us to look at some things. I'm going to stay in the Bible. But I'm telling you, I'm going to, I'm going to go and I'm taking my Bible with me when I go to vote. And that's how I'm going, all right? You do what you, you feel it. I believe most of us here will do the same thing. I want you to turn, if you will, John and those who have your Bibles to Isaiah. We're going to begin there. 5 and 22. Now, I'm going to bring out some scripture that will present negativity in several senses, okay? But then I'm going to preach in something that is not negative at all. Because we need to know what's going on negatively in our world so that then we can understand the value of positive word here. Right? So somebody say, let's just tear all of our monuments down and get rid of our history. Well, that's the craziest thing in the world. I don't get rid of the Old Testament and just go with the new because what happened in the past is still important to what happens in our day to day. Uh, Isaiah 5 and 20 through 21. Isaiah 5 and 20 through 21. I want to preach this morning on decisions. Decisions. Did you know, when I looked this up, that the average decisions that a person makes per day, do you know how many of those are? 35,000 decisions a day. Isn't that something? Let me say it again. Don't lose this. The average decisions that you and I make per day is, could be up to 35,000 per day. Wow! Isn't that something? So how many know that it would be vitally important for us to make the right decisions every day and follow the Lord? <laughs> I want to talk this morning, too, about following the Lord. I've got a bunch of different titles. Following the Lord, 35,000 a day. Now, Isaiah 5 and 20 says this. Whoa! Now, John got thrown off of a horse and his back broke. And I guarantee you, when that horse was throwing him, he was saying a particular word. You know what it was? Whoa! But that's not what this woe means. This woe don't mean woe horse. This, 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 this word means this. Woe. It means, it means this. Woe means great sorrow, grief, misery, a cause of sorrow, affliction, and trouble. Now, y'all might have cut me down. I'm kind of blaring a little bit. Isaiah 5 and 20 is saying, you don't want this. You don't want great sorrow, grief, misery, uh, and affliction and trouble. That's why he's saying to a, a drunken nation Israel, if you study this out, they got to drinking so bad until they were a drunken nation of Israel, making all kind of crazy decisions. And, and uh, Isaiah is preaching to them as we're preaching this morning, you don't want none of this stuff. You don't want all this grief and sorrow. And so, Brother Tommy, they, he's saying to them, Whoa! You don't want that. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. What happens to those that call evil good and good evil? Trouble, great grief, misery, and sorrow. Am I right about it? Uh, that put darkness for light. Somebody say, Whoa! That puts light for darkness. Somebody say, whoa. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Somebody say, whoa. whoa. Number 21, it says, whoa again. How I many know we don't want none of that I just read about whoa? 
Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. I'm going to preach the Bible today. Are you? Come on, somebody. All right, turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verses 1 through 5. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5 says this, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Are we living in the last days? I say, are we living in the last days? Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, do what? From these things, he's saying, turn away. Now, it didn't say turn away from people that is caught up in these things because how many know they need the gospel? Amen. Come on. Hurting people need the gospel. Don't turn away from the people, but turn away from these things. In other words, black is still black. Come on. White is still white. The world portrays everything as this. Not white or black. Do you know if you mix white paint with black paint, do you you know what you get? Gray. They say, oh, that's a gray area. Uh, these things are gray areas, not according to the Bible. Come on. There's no gray areas. That's just as plain as the nose on your face. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to read it again. This is very plain. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Is that where we're at? In the last days. What does that mean? Jesus is coming very soon. Then for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Is that pretty plain or is that maybe a, a, a gray area there? Lovers of their own selves or is that black or white? That's black or white, isn't it? Covetous, that's plain. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful and unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, look, looking like godliness, uh, saying this, that, and the other, but just a form and denying the power thereof from such of these things turn away. Don't turn away from the people. Amen. 2 Timothy 4 1 through 8 says this. Paul, the apostle, the elder, said this to Timothy, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. How many know today that the Word of God is the only thing that's going to deliver us? The Word of God's the only thing that's going to save us? The Word of God is the only thing that's going to direct us? When we face in 35,000 uh, decisions a day on average, is the Word of God the definite, plain, black or white Word of God will lead God and direct us? Does anybody need a, has got a decision to make? I'm talking to somebody that's got a decision to make. As a matter of fact, it, whether we like it or whether we don't, we have 35,000 on average a day from the time we 
wake up until the time we go to bed, that's a lot of decisions to make. So how many know that I am, am in, inadequate to make all those decisions by myself? So he says to Timothy, the most important thing in life, and I spoke that this past Sunday, what's the most important thing that the devil would come to steal? That is the Word of God from our lives. Paul knew by the direction of the Holy Ghost, preach the Word, be instant in season, out of season, because there's coming seasons and times where everything is not going to be most popular. You know, men and women of intelligence integrity today are not real popular in the world that we live in. But David said this, folks, we need men and women of integrity. Somebody that will say what they do and do what they say. No, we've got it to where we can call white, black, and black, white, as we read the scriptures. Amen. But that's not how God put it up. We're going through seasons. Uh, it said rebuke, reprove, rebuke exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Watch this. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust, they'll heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. What does that mean? That means that they will follow people that will say what they want to hear. Instead of following the Word of God, that sometimes is not exactly everything I want to hear. But following the Word of God will get us to victory. Amen. Come on, somebody. Following the Word of God will get us to, to blessing. Following the Word of God will cause us to, a, day by day, be at the right place at the right time. Am I talking to anybody today? Amen. We have, have decisions to make, but the Word of God can get us in the right place at the right time instead of listening to people that are paid off, even pastors that are paid off. Just saying things to please people. Saying things to uh, just an encouragement's good, but we need to speak the Word of God. Amen? And they'll turn away their ears from the truth and turn, be turned into fables. Watch thou in all things, Timothy. Endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Now, Somewhat negative, but John 16, this is what I want to preach on this morning. I need to lay those other things out. John 16. Let's do 14 and 26 first. 14 and 26 first. Ready? I want you to help me read. Would you do that? Would you read out loud? Would you do that? Verse 26. Ready? But the comforter which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said to you. My goodness. Let's do 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Now, wow, wow, wow. Somebody say wow. Somebody say it backwards. Wow. That is powerful. Hallelujah. So if I've got 35,000 decisions to make from the time I woke up this morning till I go to bed at night, he said that he's my comforter. Amen. He, 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 you know what a comforter is? Comfort is somebody that helps you through it. Not only did he comfort us, he's our comforter. He, he holds us and he helps us and he blesses us. But not only to that, Jesus was fixing to go away and he was fixing to go and sit at the right hand of the Father. He said, but I'm not going to see 
send you comfortless. I'm going to send you the comfort of the Holy Ghost. Inside of you today, this morning, you, if you're born again today, and those looking by Facebook, if you're born again today, you have the Holy Spirit inside of you that will comfort you whenever you're hurting. Amen. By decisions that we've made. Have you ever made a decision that brought some bad stuff into your life? Aren't you glad that all we got to do is just let the Holy Spirit lead us and guide us and direct us? And every day that we live, and every day that we live, He'll, He'll, Janice said, He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, but I'll be with you. He said, I'll comfort you, I'll, I will, I'll hold you, I'll take care of you, I'll watch over you. And then watch this, verses. Uh, let's go to 16 and 13. Verse 16 and 13 of John. 16 and 13 says this, How be it when He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into all room. Would you help me read that, please? Come on, let's back up. How be it when He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth. He'll not speak of himself, but whatever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and will show you things to come. Wow. Another title. Global Positioning System. That's really what I wanted to preach on today. Global positioning system. Does anybody know what that is? What is it? What? GPS. Do you, do you know anything about GPS? You ever used GPS? Brother Donald Adcock, have you ever used GPS? Boy, you messed me up. This You messed me up big time this week. <laughs> See, what happens is, is global, global positioning system. We went on a trip this week. We went to Helen, Georgia, North Georgia Mountains. Anybody ever been to Helen, Georgia? North Georgia Mountain, man, it's beautiful up there. We went up there and just got back yesterday and spent three or four days. Janice and I just rested and had a good time. That's why we all spry and laughy. I know y'all wore out and you don't feel like it, but I feel good. <laughs> so we, we got up there. And so Donald, my, my older brother, you know, person of wisdom, I was trying to remember, because see, I'm from Atlanta originally, and I act like, because I was born and raised in Atlanta, I know Atlanta like the back of my hand. The only thing about it is, every time you go to Atlanta, it totally looks different if you wait a year. Especially on them interstates and those highways. You ever been there? I got up there and I figured out how. I, I told Janice, I said, Don, first of all, my brother told me, he said, he said, I want you to learn how to use a GPS, a global positioning system. And uh, I was like, you know, <laughs> I don't need to know that. All I got to do, I remember what to do. <laughs> so I'm going up 85 interstate out of Columbus, Georgia, and I'm heading up that way, and I come to 285. You know, 285 is a bypass. It bypasses 75. I know all that. Right? And so then I decided, I'm, okay, I need to get on 285 uh, uh, um, East here, I believe it was. And so I'm going around. I need, Don, Donald told me, he said, you need to learn how to use GPS. I said, look, I already know I go 285, 85, 285 to 400. <coughs> and uh, so uh, I don't need all that. You know, that's kind of like we do with God's positioning system. GPS. There's two GPSs. I realized, Donald, we need the, the global positioning system and we need the God positioning system. 
And so I decided uh, I didn't need the, uh, the, the, that global positioning system because uh, when I got up there, me and Janice said, we're just talking, you know, and I'm going down 285 and they're passing me like I'm sitting still and I'm wiving this away and weaving that away. And, 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 and we got to talking, enjoying ourselves. And I missed the turn. <laughs> Now, if you don't know anything about Atlanta, if you miss the turn, you're in trouble. So I missed the 400 turn to coming Georgia. So I had to keep it going. And then I got on Interstate 75 and I'm heading north and I'm praying in, in God's positioning system. <laughs> Lord, what do I do? I said, God, I'm, I don't know where I'm going here. I'm, I'm lost. And Donald, Janice took your advice. She got on her phone and did you know you can pick that phone up and you can say, Siri? <laughs> Pull up maps. <laughs> And Janice pulled up maps, and, and then this, this woman come on there, and she said, uh, now Janice said on there, said, uh, we need to know how to get to Dahlonega, Georgia, because see, that's up 400. If I get to Dahlonega, I know where I'm going. And she, so she says, well, you bypassed it. <laughs> I'm thinking, Brother Donald, no joke. <laughs> <laughs> New route. Now, if you're going up Interstate 75, you in six lanes here. If you're going south, you in six more lanes. So I'm completely on the left lane over there, just just booking down the road. And this GPS says to turn on the next exit. Well, look here, coming out of Atlanta, you don't get on that right exit. <laughs> I, or you get run over. So anyway, the GPS said, go to this next turn. So finally, guess what? I missed it. <laughs> so the GPS said this. Okay, <laughs> you missed it. So start getting over in the right lane and turn in this next exit there. You know, she did. I'm, I'm glad she didn't give up on me because I missed the turn. <laughs> and she said, I turned around and going into this next exit. So I turned around. We went back through that next exit. How many know that sometimes when you miss it, God don't quit on you? Amen. I, there's, there's two over here. How many know that when you miss it, God don't quit on you? <laughs> I missed it twice, Brother Donald, on the GPS. And the woman didn't give up on me. She said, all right, take the next exit. So I turn around and I make that next exit. And I come back and I get to heading back toward Atlanta. Then it tells me, now get in the right lane. And it's two miles now before your exit. I'm thinking, Lord is speaking to me. He said, this is how I do. This is how my Holy Spirit will do for you. It'll tell you every move to make. I thought about this, that that GPS don't didn't tell me five moves to make. It just told me the next one. And the Spirit of God began to, to, to speak to me and He said, I'm not going to tell you how you're going to be. I had a woman one time preaching a revival and she asked me this question, Brother, I want you to pray for me because I want to know God's will for my life. I want to know where He's bringing me and where He wants me to go and I want to know. And, and I started to lay hands on her and pray for her and the Holy Spirit. Aren't you glad for the Holy Spirit that leads us and guides us and directs us over 35,000 times a day? He said, don't you pray for her to do that because I'm not telling her every move to make. I'm going to just tell her one. And, and little Miss Siri on there, she wouldn't tell me this next move. I'm thinking, well, where am I going here? She wouldn't do it. She said, in two miles, look for such and such and turn right. Well, in two miles, I looked for such and such. I took one step at a time. I preached before that hurricane, Brother Donald, a message the Lord had given me. And it was very simple, and it was this. We walk by faith and not by sight. And the Lord spoke to me, and He said, look up the word walk. I looked up the word walk, looking for an in-depth message or meaning. And you know what it said in there? The... Uh, 
the process of putting one foot in front of the other. <laughs> and I'm telling you, after that storm hit, I was devastated and I didn't know which way to go and I didn't know what to do. And the Lord kept saying, walk by faith and not by sight. The process of putting one foot in front of the other. See, we want to know this and we want to know that. We want to know the other. We want to know and Donald, little Miss Siri told me after two miles, I done what she said. I got instruction. I done what she said. And then after two miles, she said, now, seven miles, you're going to go down here and you're going to look for Highway 400 going to uh, what's that? Cumming, Georgia. Yeah. Now, so I drove seven miles and I'm driving and I'm thinking, man, this seems like a long way. She wasn't telling me nothing. Won't she come up and say, Hey, I'm weak. I'll never leave, never leave you, nor forsake you. But, so have you ever been in a position where God, have you ever been in a position, a global position, where God was not telling you nothing else? Do you know why? Because He didn't have nothing else to tell until you went that seven miles. Then two miles before the seven miles, Donald, like the little Siri girl come on there, and she said, now in two miles, get in the, the second to the right lane. I'm, we got six to deal with. See, sometimes we, no, 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 no. Every time we need specifics. But God will speak to us one thing. And if we'll fulfill that, then He'll speak to the next move. The next move, oh, God started speaking to me that. And boy, I started coming to some revelation, some understanding about where the Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us into all truth. If we get turned around, if we miss our road, if we, if we mess up in life, if we miss God. Anybody ever miss God? Come on. God's position and system never changes. He never walks away from us. If we, if we fail to do everything right, church, try to make out like everybody is making every turn correctly. I've not can I say that? I've not made every turn correct. But he just keep coming back in God's position and system. God's GPS. Come, come on somebody. God has a GPS. Did, did you know that? Sometimes God's GPS, John, he won't speak to your mind. He speaks to your heart. Have you ever been doing something you didn't know which way to go and what to do and you just knew in your heart, this is what I need to do. Am I talking to anybody today? You just knew it. You couldn't explain it. We was not being led by our head, but by our heart. Anyway, she said, get in the second to the far right lane and take this exit. And I did. And boy, I was heading just on the right track. And everything was going well. And we just followed. That little girl took us to the front door of our motel. I mean, every... Y'all ever use GPS? Terry, you... Don, you use GPS? Not me. I don't even know how to do a computer. Janice does. Don said this. He said, well, if you don't want to learn, I'll show Janice how to do GPS. You need to know how to do GPS. <laughs> See, we, we can do like Brother Jerry, just be ignorant about stuff. I ain't going to church today because I don't need to know nothing about the Word. I'm, you know, I can get there. Uh, let, me, let me say it like this. I do it myself. Come on, somebody. You think I'm, I, look, I know what I'm talking about. I do it. See, I, look here. I've been my own man for a long time. And I do a lot of stuff myself. Proud and boasters and all these things. When if, when if I would humble myself and go to my older brother and say, Donald, help. I'm lost. 
I don't know what to do on Sunday morning this morning. I don't know which way to go. I'm lost. If I go to God's GPS, He'll say, hey, just say, look, God, I made a mess out of this, and I'm talking to some, not somebody on this Facebook. I've made a mess, and my life is in shambles. Then just get to God's GPS, His, His position, God's positional system. God's positional system is not Siri talking, Brother Ken, but it's the Holy Spirit talking. And more, and, and I'm going to learn that stuff, Donald. I, I appreciate that. But more than that, I need to know what that GPS book says. Because, see, we're in some situations here, are you listening to me, that GPS, Siri can't help. But God can. I believe in I believe in using your brain, but I also believe in using your spirit. And when God tells you a thing, go for it. Because in, and He'll only tell you one step at a time. Because He knows. I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, why didn't you tell me to tell that lady and just speak through me and tell me to tell her whole life? Why didn't you just tell me to tell her all those things? And He said, I only give my people one step at a time because they can't handle no more than one. Are you listening to me? How's this going to come out, Lord? I know I got to do this, I got to do that, and this, 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 this. and how's this going to come out? And, and when I'm an, am I another year old, how am I going to do this? God sent me here today to tell you that He'll give you the next step. We walk by faith and not by sight. He will give you the next step to take. When you take that first step that He tells you, quick as you do it, He'll give you that next one. But He's not going to let you know everything all at one time. That's how God's positional system works. And God is a God of specifics. I said God is a God of specifics. But He's only going to give you one specific move at a time because you can't handle it. Do you know that if I was on death row but I didn't know when I was going to die. I could deal with that, okay? But if I was on death row and they say, in the morning, you're going to die, I don't know if I could handle that. Come on now. See, what the Lord has said is that you can't handle too many details at once. See, he knows we're like babies, but he respects us as adults. But he's only going to give us. A, I was sent here today to say that until we make the next turn that he's told us, he's not going to tell us so on and so forth. And then I want to share one other thing with you, and I'm just I'm just about done. Let me know that God has a GPS system. It's called God's positioning. System. Come on, say it with me. God's positioning system. He does that day by day. God's positioning system. When God gives you a word, do that. And don't worry about what's after this because the next time you make the turn. Okay. Now, Donald, that was pretty neat. I mean, I, I, you know, even somebody like me, I don't know about a computer, but I could follow that little girl. She just said, all right, turn. You know, if anybody tells you that's what God is wanting to do, He's wanting to tell us every turn to make. <laughs> y'all didn't, y'all looked at me like you didn't know that. I, go, Crystal, God wants us to look at Him <laughs> for every move we make. I was lost, and I didn't know how to get where I was needing to go. And that little girl on there said, not just said it, but it was this way. Listen to me. Genesis got her cued in. 
every move to make, we got to Helen, Georgia. I mean, boy, we make some turns up in Helen, Georgia, and we got right straight to our motel. So, Don, we thought that was that was cool. So the next morning, we wanted to go to Delonica, Georgia. Little old quaint town up there, beautiful little town, old country town, and we would go there and walk around. But it was a good hour's drive. I told Janice, I said, and you know what? Let me tell you something about her real quick. She is scared to death of stuff she don't understand. <laughs> is anybody else in there? <laughs> well, let me tell you about me. I'm scared to death of stuff I don't understand. Because, see, I need you to show me something. <laughs> she just, just give me a sign or something. <laughs> And the reason that me and her don't back off of that computer stuff is because we're scared of it. We have a fear of new stuff. Brother, I don't even like it when she moves my chair in the living room. I don't like new stuff. I just... And after me and Janice had this argument on the next morning, I said, pull that Siri lady up. I don't know how to do that. No, she just, you, if you give her something new, she, her eyes get this big, big old brown eyes, they get about this big around. Just like, mm, shut up. I don't want to do that. I don't know. Anybody else in here like that? Leave me alone. Just, just, I said, pull that Siri thing up. I, I said, what did you do? I don't know what I did. It was God brought her on there. I don't know. Leave me alone. She, what? She used her voice. She spoke something. She didn't know what to do, but she spoke. Siri, pull this up. And then she used her voice and she says, how do I get from Helen to... to you did? You're messing my message up. <laughs> she used her voice. <laughs> And she said, how do I get from Helen to Delonica? Or, excuse me, she typed it in. <laughs> and you know what this little girl said? All right. It's almost like Don. She said, get in your car. <laughs> Y'all know I'm still talking about God's GPS. <laughs> So I, I really think John, I heard her say, Jerry, get in your car, turn the switch on. Y'all yeah, don't need this, but I need this. So just, see, I'm, I'm not real smart, so I need this. I need to walk through life being, being blessed and being increased. And I need to walk through life with peace and with joy. And I need to, 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 the reason that I don't sometimes walk through this life with peace and joy is sometimes I just don't ask the right person. Are you listening to me? So all of a sudden, she comes on. And she says, all right, get in your car and turn the key. And go out. Look here, Don. They told me how to go out of the parking lot. <laughs> I'm thinking, Godly, how do you know where I'm at? Look, Jerry, I mean, she said, look, go out to the parking lot entrance. Turn right. Go to the main street. Turn right. And then... We turned, I bet you, 30 different roads from the time we left. Look at I went down the road I thought was somebody's driveway. 
<laughs> y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about? I mean, look at when we went in there, it was like two rows. When we went from that road that to Delonica, we turned and she said, she'll say, turn right, turn left. And then we got on that there to somebody's driveway and she said, turn left. I said, Janice, this is somebody's driveway. She said, turn left. See, the, the, the Lord is just speaking to me the whole time. He's saying, you, you nutty thing, I'm telling you which way to go you won't listen. So I said, well, bless God, I'm going to trust her anyway. She got us to the motel. So I turned down somebody's driveway. We went down a dirt road for about two miles. I'm thinking, I'm fixing to drive right up into somebody's house. Sure enough, we come into a road. She said, then my next turn, she ain't said nothing the whole time. I'm on the bumpy road. I'm thinking, she need to come on here and tell us something. God's GPS. See, we'll <laughs> thinking foolishly, we'll follow our normal GPS. Well, she said a turn here, so we're turning here. And then God's got a GPS, which is the Word of God, and Him and the Holy Spirit leading, God and directing into our spirit. And we'll question that, and we'll question this, and we'll do it, or we may not do it. And God has got the most powerful GPS there is. I bet you we made 50 turns, seemed like, to get an hour's drive. I'm thinking, my Lord, enough is enough. I told Janice, I said, I've been from Helen to Delonica, and I ain't never went this way. Am I speaking to, is the Holy Spirit speaking to somebody today? You may make, make 30 turns here in life, but it's called God's GBS. Are, are we as trusting? But I'm telling you, we trusted old Siri. Man, she told us. And did you know all of a sudden, we ended up right in downtown Dahlonega. The Bible says, and I'm coming to a close, that the Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us into all truths. If you're questioning this morning, which way do I go or what do I do? Listen to this message. I know I get a little bit silly sometimes, not, not intending to lose nobody, but I want you to get a hold of this message about God's positioning system. God's positioning system is nothing like the world's positioning system. You may, God may have you do things that don't make a lick of sense to you. You may be turning left. You may be turning right. You may be going this. He'll give you one step at a time. Just take the steps. Just, just don't worry about anything past that one step. What do you know to do right now? What is he speaking to you to do right now? Some of you, it was to come to church. If then, let me conclude. If we have 35,000 decisions a day to make, boy, we need a GPS. Can anybody say amen? amen. I need a GPS. I need God. God's positioning system. Did you get anything this morning? Amen. I just... Amen. 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 I'm not going to say anything else, but John, would you come? If you're here today and you need prayer, though, if you need a touch from God in any way, whether spiritual, whether, whether physical, uh, whatever it is, anybody needs some direction? Lift up your hand if you do. Anybody need direction? I want to pray for you. Amen. But I want you to get the message. The message is the answer. Follow the message. The Holy Spirit inside of you will lead you and guide you into all truth if you'll just be a follower. I've not always been, Brother Don, the follower that I need to be.
But if I will follow Him, He will take me to my destination. The Word of God is, is using our Bible for a road map. I want to pray for us today. Lift up your hand. If you you got some decisions to make that you know of, you need the Lord to help you this morning with. Come on, just lift up your hand. Heavenly Father, we just pray right now. Thank you, Lord, for a decision. Come on, come on, brother. Uh, Kevin. Hallelujah. Come on, Brother John, help us. Hallelujah.